You come to the zoo, of course, to look at the animals, but then sometimes they look back at you. What are they thinking? Or maybe the question is, can we even call what's going on in their heads as thinking as we know it? There is this idea that we're the only ones capable of complex thoughts and emotions, but Carl Safina says that goes against common sense and observation. Animals are thinking, they have emotions, they do feel, they are conscious, and um, in many species they are also individuals with individual lives and relationships to other individuals that are very important to them. It would seem to me that if you're an animal lover or even a pet owner... It's obvious. It's obvious. Right. Safina is a scientist, a conservationist, and a writer. He's the author of Beyond Words, What Animals Think and Feel. He was a guest speaker recently at the St. Louis Zoo, held an informal session that day with zoo staff members, and he spoke to us. I don't think there's anything radical about the idea. I think that there's just a, a lot of people who are... Um, who don't really know anything about animals. And they, they have grown up in a tradition that has told them that you may not ask certain questions about animals. And one of them is, what are the mental experiences of animals? You may not ask that question. And as far as we um, know, there's no way to answer that question. So it's not a question we can ask. The evidence of animals' thoughts and emotions, he says, doesn't come from lab experiments or zoos, but from those who have spent years observing animals, like elephants, wolves, and whales, in their natural habitat and in their natural family and social settings, and doing things that we might consider acting human. But perhaps our behavior should be seen in the broader context of shared behavior. Our, our emotions and feelings and everything else have emerged from all the other things that came before us. That's how life works, and that is true. And that's the main basis for the conclusion that everything is on a continuum and that we have the feelings we have, they have the feelings that they have, we have the thoughts we have, they have the thoughts that they have as well. In the book, you, you mention things, and the people who are out in the field observing uh, elephants or wolves or, or whales, talking about things like jealousy, animals being magnanimous, animals being mean, wolves being good leaders and bad leaders that other wolves don't like. Um, is that the sort of place where it's like, well, now we might be taking this a little too far in our interpretation? Um, yeah, but I mean, the, the people who talk that way understand that some of that is speculative. If you, if you say that uh, an animal is frightened or you say that an animal is acting in defense of her baby, I think you're on extremely firm ground. If you say that those two wolves just kicked their sister out of the family because they were jealous of her, it's probably true in, in that situation because of the whole context of what was going on. But not exactly sure, but we say the same things about people. You know, we say that some our, the boss at work acted in a certain way, probably because she's jealous of this employee. And we speculate on human emotions too. This goes beyond an academic debate for Carl Safina. He is, remember, a conservationist. And the animals he's talking about, many of them, are threatened or endangered from loss of habitat and overhunting by humans. We are living, many argue, in an era of mass extinctions. Yeah, I think all of my work is motivated by that concern. And one of the reasons that I wrote this book the way that I did is that I wanted, the, I wanted to open a path for the animals, in a sense, to make their own case for their own lives on Earth. Because in conservation, we mostly talk about numbers. We say that... Um, 30,000 elephants are killed a year. We say that something has lost 80% of its habitat. They're down to only 3,000. Uh, they're declining by 6% a year. That's just a string of numbers, but it, it, it may tell you a little bit about what's at stake, but it doesn't tell you who's at stake. So why would you necessarily care unless you know who they are? And I wanted, in this book, I wanted them to show us who they are so that we would care, so that we would double our efforts to make sure that we simply leave room for them to exist.